Hi, you're watching Sahara TV. It's January 28, 2012. It's time for Afri Current. This is the part of the show when we give you a snapshot of what's happening in Africa. I have lots of news to share with you this week. I've got news from South Africa where indigenous languages are disappearing from schools. Also, child kidnapping is on the rise in parts of Central Africa where children are forced to work in bondage and prostitution. We've got these stories for you and more. My name is Chika Odua. Keep watching for this week's edition of Afri Current. The culture of the Zulu people of South Africa is intricately tied to their language and their music. Those children were singing a Zulu song at their school in KwaZulu Natal in South Africa, but they might not be singing Zulu songs at school anymore. That's because the Zulu language is slowly disappearing from the teaching curriculum in primary schools in South Africa. What this means is that the major language that will be taught in schools will be Afrikaans and English, once referred to as languages of the oppressor. But Zulu is not the only language slowly disappearing from schools in South Africa. If Zulu and Kosa eventually are phased out of schools in South Africa, then teaching sessions like this one will become quite rare. Nelson Mandela came into power in South Africa as the country's first black president in 1994. It marked the beginning of the end of apartheid. Never again shall it be that this beautiful land will again experience the oppression. And while the world celebrated with the Rainbow Nation, South Africa's blacks dreamed about a brighter future. We still need the younger youth to want to be like him, to look at him and see inspiration and see motivation, be able to dream and to, to see themselves as Nelson Mandela one day, as he has been a role model in some of the young people out here. Well, it's 17 years later and black people in South Africa still face endemic challenges and inequality, but blacks are not the only group suffering. The interracial population also deal with a number of hardships. They are called colored people. Colored people face high rates of HIV and AIDS, a high percentage of school dropouts, drug usage, and teenage pregnancy. The area of Manenberg in Western South Africa has a high population of coloreds. A documentary featured on Al Jazeera follows colored students at a high school in Manenberg who were born in 1994. These so-called Mandela's children were born after apartheid, but for them, the system is still far from equal. The children of Nelson Mandela the fact that you got schooled and you were born inside a free South Africa, an apartheid free South Africa, a democratic South Africa. How free are you really? People look at the social evils that is taking place in our community, the drug trafficking, the gang wars, people being killed. So many cases of incest, teenage pregnancies. And you must be commended for the fact that you come in here daily dodging the bullets. Last week, I reported that a huge amount of money was allegedly missing from state funds in Angola. 32 billion U.S. dollars seems to have disappeared from state funds in Angola, according to Human Rights Watch. The Angolan government says this is just not true. 
But Human Rights Watch says that the federal government of Angola did not properly document money that is said to be linked to the state oil company. Well, some of the money has been found. At least that's what the International Monetary Fund is claiming. The IMF had originally stated that 32 billion U.S. dollars had been unaccounted for in Angola. But on Tuesday, the fund declared that the discrepancy was linked to quote unquote quasi fiscal operations by the state oil firm, according to Reuters. Throughout Central Africa, children are being kidnapped to work, and reports show that kidnapping is actually on the rise. Many of these children work as prostitutes, but sometimes there is no force. Children simply choose a lifestyle of prostitution as a means to get out of poverty. The brothel is full of clients and children. At only 13 years old, Mafi has quickly learned to block out the pain of trading sex for survival and has become reliant on the men who sleep with her. This week in African history, on January 27th in 1991, Somalia's dictator Mohamed Siad Bari fled the capital of Mogadishu as rebels took over the palace. Bari had been in power since 1969 after the assassination of Somalian President Abdi Rashad al shermark Bari led a government that was supported by the Soviet Union. That's all we have for today. If you want information on these stories and more, check out SaharaReporters.com.